Hi, my name is Micah Watson. I'm a composer and music producer, and I'm teaching you through the Ableton Live manual one chapter at a time. And today I'm going to be talking about your audio and MIDI effects. So I won't be telling you how to use all of them, but I'm just going to be giving you a general how to, what is what, just to set you up so you can get experimenting in your DAW. And if you are already used to using them in a couple of weeks, I am going to be going through all of the audio and MIDI effects that actually exist. So that'll be a little bit more in depth. Okay, so first of all, in Ableton Live, you've got audio tracks, you've got MIDI tracks, you've got all of these things on the left here inside your browser. So you've got them categorized under instruments, audio effects, MIDI effects, and a couple other things which I'm not going to worry about right now. Related to these three things are plugins, but these are third-party plugins and not so-called native plugins that you get when you purchase Ableton Live. So I'm not going to be talking about them now, but I will be talking about how to install and use third-party VST plugins in another video. So instruments you need to put onto MIDI tracks. They are the things that give your MIDI data that looks like this. They make it sound like a piano that's potentially playing a G, an A, and I think that's an F. Yeah. Audio effects are things like reverb and delay. If you click on audio effects over here and you click into the search bar and you just search reverb, it'll give you plugins here. If you've searched for this and you haven't found anything, chances are you have an intro to live edition. So I'm using Ableton Live Suite, so it comes with everything that Ableton has to offer. Could also be that your install failed, so you didn't download all the third-party content that you can get on the Ableton Live website. I will link you to that in the description. Or it could be that you haven't actually clicked on audio effects over here. So maybe you clicked on drums and you try to search for reverb. So just make sure those three things are in place. If you still can't find it, then just leave a comment and I'll try and help you. But yeah, so you can search for an audio effect. So audio effects are things that you put onto audio tracks. You can also use audio effects on MIDI tracks, so tracks like this that don't actually produce a signal, they've got these notes, but your audio effect will have to be after an instrument because the instrument device over here, so let's turn this into mallets. What I just did is I put a device on this MIDI track that converts these three bits of data and turns it into an actual signal. So now that this MIDI data has gone through this instrument and is now producing an audio signal, you can actually put an audio effect after that. And then you've got your MIDI effects, which are only for MIDI. Okay, so how do you put these effects in Ableton? How does this all work? What's the screen down here? So if you take your mouse to the bottom right here and click on this tab, you get your device view. So this is still corresponding to your highlighted track. Um, and this just shows me the devices that I've got on this particular track. If I click on a different track, like this one, it's empty all of a sudden because I haven't put any instruments or devices here yet. Same with these two audio tracks. But if I go back to this uh, MIDI track, I click on device over here, then you can see that I've got a couple of things here. I've also got something that's folded up. So if you've got tons of effects and you can literally just like keep plonking them on. I don't suggest you do what I'm doing now because it's going to sound terrible, but just to, to show you what I'm doing. So I'm literally adding a lot of effects and I've created this, what you call a device chain. It's a chain of devices down here and it works from left to right. So your signal comes into this MIDI track and uh, gets this MIDI data that gets converted to audio with the instrument that I put. So I put this mallet instrument, which is your sweet bells. And then from this whole bell thing, which is using this sampling machine here, I think it's Ableton Simpler. Then it goes into uh, my reverb. I had to double click it here, so it was folded up, but I just double clicked it to make it go bigger. And uh, then it goes into this other reverb and this other reverb and this other reverb. So it goes from here into the reverb and then it just keeps going into these devices that I've put on here until it gets the end of the chain. And from here, it'll go into your master track. Typically, it might go somewhere else depending on how you've rooted it, but if you've done literally what I just did, then from here it'll go into your master track over here and it'll be turned from digital audio uh, into analog signal which comes out of your speakers. Okay, so you can rack up devices. With MIDI effects, they're kind of like audio effects, but specifically for MIDI and these ones you're going to have to put before your MIDI instruments. So it's very important. MIDI effects audio effects and instruments can all go on MIDI tracks, but the order specifically has to be MIDI effect, then instrument, then audio effect. Otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, so I'm just going to grab an arpeggiator and I'm just going to pull it in here. 
So like I said, I'm not going to give you a very detailed overview of what these effects do. But just to show you, um, I'm going to take away like all these reverbs. Because, you know, they're not a good idea. <laughs> so to take a device away, you just highlight it like this and you can click backspace or delete on your keyboard so it's really simple to just get rid of them you can also hide them because it's taking up a lot of space double click on this title bar over here where it says reverb or compressor or eq or whatever device you're using double click and it's folded up over here and you can see that the name over here is written from bottom to top and if you want to make it big again you can just double click on there again okay so i've added an arpeggiator in front so really important that it goes before your instrument and uh, what MIDI effects do is they take your MIDI data, so these bits of data, and they mess them around in a certain way depending on what your effect is. So just like audio effects take your audio and affect it in some way, MIDI effects take your MIDI data and affect it in some way. So an arpeggiator typically takes a chord, like I've got over there, and instead of just playing one stagnant chord, I'll be playing arpeggios. So a chord would be the notes played at once and kind of stay there and a pigeon would be like so instead of going you're using the same three notes but you're going up and down or up or whatever but that's what an arpeggiator does so it arpeggiates it breaks up the chord and then plays these three midi notes in a different sequence okay so now that i've put the arpeggiator for the instrument we can hear that it sounds different So you can hear the difference. So what I was doing there, I was bypassing and reactivating the device. So next to this device title over here, there's a little circular icon and this is your device activator. And if it's highlighted, then your device is active and it's working. And if it's grayed out with this black ring around it, then it's essentially not working. You can essentially have 500 devices here that are all off. And it's not really going to impact anything, even your CPU, because the signal on your computer just passes through it and it doesn't change anything. <laughs> Another thing I want to tell you about devices, and for this I'm just going to use an audio effect. Okay, I've got a compressor here, and uh, let me just get an audio clip. So I've got a drum loop here. So if you look at the compressor, you can see what it's doing here, and you've got all these buttons. But to the left and to the right of your device, you've got more meters. And basically, this is showing you the signal of the audio coming in and the signal coming out. And what can happen is if you've got compressors that push up the audio. So if I make my makeup gain quite high, you can see that the output level is quite high and it's actually causing it to clip at the back here. Well, it's distorting, but if I were to render it out, they would be clipping. So it's really important to note what's happening here, just to keep your levels at bay and to help you with your gain staging when you're mixing or writing music. And before I sign off, I just want to talk about presets. So all of these devices can be tweaked in some way. Every single device will have at least one parameter that you can change to affect your audio in the way you want. But sometimes there's a particular setting that you've used in the past that you want to use or that you want to save. And you can, you don't always have to sit and figure out what the sound is that you want. So for instance, with my compressor here, I can either toggle to the preset that I want or I can click this button over here, which is your hot swap mode. And basically when I click that, it toggles my browser here to this compressor and it's got all these presets over here that I can use. And I can just take my mouse and go down and try them out. So if I've got my audio playing and hot swap mode, so it's Q to enable hot swap mode, I can try these different effects. You know, all these compressors, they sound a little different. And uh, when I found one, then, uh, you know, I, I can keep that there. So that can save a lot of time. Alternatively, if you found a setting that you like and you want to save it, you can just hit this little icon that looks like a floppy disk this little file will pop up here under your compressor file over there and you can call it uh, preset or drums or whatever you want to call it and if you decide you don't want to save it anymore it's okay you can just hit escape 
So that's it for now. That's your basics of what kind of devices you have and where to put them in. In the next video, I'm going to be teaching you all about presets. So you can actually make serious presets where you've got track presets, like track setup. So that when you load a specific track, you've got your whole device chain ready and waiting to go. I've already spoken about project templates in a previous video. And I'm also going to be telling you how to use VST plugins. So third party plugins over here how to set them up and please subscribe if this content is helpful i'd love to help you learn ableton life better if you've got any questions feel free to contact me or leave a question in the comments below and i'll do my best to help you and if i can't then maybe another viewer can so yeah have a lovely day